Here's another installment in my Flashlights 101 series where I attempt to explain some of the concepts that we talk about in the flashlight community, enthusiast community. Sometimes this can be daunting to people just getting into it. So today we're going to cover CCT, Tint, Duv, BBL, and BIN. And what these terms mean and how they relate to the color temperature and look and quality of the flashlight you're getting. So I'm starting here with an image that I created recently of 12 different flashlights I have and the type of white light that they're making. And there's a lot going on here, so let's kind of jump into it and talk about what it all means. Well, first off, I've got these mostly arranged from warmer to cooler. Now, that's what we call CCT or correlated color temperature. Sometimes people just call it color temp or temp, but the CCT is used for white light sources and it describes the dominant color tone, so that overall mix you're getting, along a dimension that ranges from warm or yellow and red all the way to blue or cool. Okay, so warm over here, cool over here, orange and red over here, bluish over here. Now there's more than just that, but let's take a look at that first. So if I click on this picture, and most of these diagrams I've lifted from budget light forums and other sources, and they're not my work. I don't want to take credit for this. But if you take a look at this excellent diagram here, you can see that this is all pretty much the same type of emitter. It's a, a 21C. Uh, I got a 21B in there, but these are mostly 21Cs. And you can see it goes from warm to cool. And what I like about this diagram is these are all pretty neutral, meaning that they all are on BBL, which we'll talk about next. Looking at this, you can see that there's not really any greens or pinks present. And let's now talk about the BBL. So BBL looks kind of like this. First off, we have to talk about the color space in the chromaticity chart. So chromaticity is a way of taking all the colors available and putting them in a chart to show their relationship. And you'll notice that along the middle is a curved line called the BBL or the black body locus. The black body locus describes the color range that black body objects heated will go through. So let's relate this to stars for a second. If you take a look at this Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, you'll notice that there's red, yellow, orange, blue, almost violet stars. But, and I'm talking about actual stars in the sky, right? But notice that there's no green or magenta or pink stars. And the reason why is because if you take a black body object, like some matter or some metal, and you heat it in a fire, it will glow red, all the way to white and then blue. And remember, blue hot is the hottest. So these are the colors we see when you start heating an element. So going back to this other chart here, this path is that black body locus, which means the path that these color temperatures are gonna pass through when you're heating a black body. So when you hear the term BBL, that's what it refers to this line. Now, there's another chart that's been specifically associated with LED emitters, and it is the ANSI C78.377 chart. This chart describes the same chromaticity, but it's specifically designed for LEDs, and in it, they take the delta and the U and the V, and when we say the U and the V, we're just talking about hue and saturation spread over a chart. In that chart, we have the BBL line again, but the thing is, we're also going to use it to describe what we see in LED emitters, and sometimes LED emitters can be above or below that line, and that's what we're describing here. So for example, you might have a 4,000 Kelvin white light, but it might sit below the BBL line, so kind of a little pinkish, a little rosy, or above the BBL line and be a little bit greenish. 
Most people don't really like green in their white light. It's just a little bit objectionable. However, pink seems to be favorable. Some people prefer neutral, so right on the line itself, but a fair amount of people actually like it a little bit rosy. This movement above or below BBL is what we call tint with flashlights. So let's go back to the original image we had, and you'll notice that, for example, this flashlight on the end is 2000 Kelvin, so it's a really warm color temperature, but it's pretty neutral. I don't see really any hints of green or magenta in it. Now, when I move to the SST20, it gets a little bit cooler. It's still on the warm side, but notice it's still very neutral. It's right on that BBL line. But when I get to this E21A, you can start to see that all of a sudden it's starting to turn pinkish. So this would be below that black body locust line. And then this 3500 here, the 219B, is much more neutral than the one next to it. it. Has much less pink, even though it's about the same color temperature. Now let's talk about tint bins. If I flip back to this picture, you'll see that here's that same chromaticity chart. It's just that we're looking at the center section of the white light. And notice that you have all these little squares with letters and numbers in them. Well, this is the Cree tints overlay. Let's go to the next one that shows the 219 overlay. And you'll notice that this 219B SW45 has a little square overlaid here. And what we're trying to explain is, is that any of the 219B SW45K emitters should kind of sit in this range. This is clearly below the black body locust line, so all of these emitters are gonna look kind of pinkish, kind of rosy. So let's take a look at our real world example again, and here is the 219B SW45K, and you can see it's clearly pinkish. So that's how this chart with the different bins, and the bins are these letters and numbers, relates to the real world examples. So sometimes you'll be ordering a flashlight and they'll say, this is a SST light, but it's an FA3 bin. And what they're referring to is these numbers. Now, if you look on this chart, you're not gonna find an FA3 bin because this is not a luminous branded chart. So you'll have to look up the correct chart of tint bins for the emitter you're looking at. Now, lastly, I wanna talk about emitter mixing and how that can affect the tint. Since we already talked about the fact that we tend to find green objectionable and that people tend to like rosy or pink tones, one easy way to get more pink in the light is to actually mix two different emitters together, two different color temperatures that is. So if you take a look at this next one here, the E21A 2000 and 5000 mix, this is literally a light where half the emitters are 2000K and half of them are 5000K. If you take a look at the chromaticity chart with the BBL line again, you'll notice that if I were to plot a 2000K emitter somewhere over here on this line, and then I were to plot a 5000K emitter over here, and then draw a line straight between them, you can see how the mix would arrive below the line. And so that's what's happening here. When you take two emitters that are much different color temperatures and you mix them, because the BBL line is curved, you arrive below BBL and have that nice rosy tint people are looking for. So I hope this video was helpful for you and that you now have a better understanding of CCT, tint, duve, and BBL.